Welcome back to Turning Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me Corwin Coe. Uh, Corwin is the CEO and a member of the Board of Directors of Sitka Gold Corp. Uh, and he is a geologist. He's uh, had many years of experience uh, looking for precious metals, and he's in the uh, in the hunt for at least four projects that their Sitka is operating, uh, is exploring and developing uh, this year. Uh, Sitka trades in Toronto. SIG is a symbol there. You can buy it down here in the states, as I have under the symbol SITKF. Fifty-seven point two million shares, eighteen cents in Canadian money. I'm looking on my screen now. In U.S. money, about fifteen cents. Um, it gives it a market cap of around, well, I guess in Canadian money, around ten million dollars, something like that. So, um, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me again, Core. It's really good to have you with me. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a diff- different uh, environment than the last time we talked, where uh, the power outage uh, happened and. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't able to get on online with you there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You had a big storm up there, and uh, we had to cancel. Um, a- anyway, um, you, so you've got three. Uh, you've, there were three projects that I know about, and you're telling me there's a fourth one uh, in the U. Well, okay. So you've got the RC property uh, and another and another project called the OGI property in the Yukon. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the you, you love all your children. You love all your properties, but I think the one you were most excited about was RC Gold. Uh, but talk to us about what's going on in the Yukon with those two properties and what you've accomplished this year and what you hope to do next year. Yeah, Jay, so first off, we've uh, had four drill programs uh, this year, one in mm-hmm. our property in Nevada, one in Arizona at the Burrow Creek, um, a major one at RC Gold, and then the newly acquired OGI property also in the Yukon. Um, we've been focused on the Yukon for the last few months, and we finally got all of our uh, drill results back, and we've got a, a, a spectacular gold discovery there that uh, has just uh, got us very excited. We ended up putting four drill holes into an area over a two-kilometer length, and they all came back with gold from surface all the way to the bottom of the holes with grades that were... Um, uh, comparable to uh, Victoria Gold's uh, property that just went in production up there. Uh, we had some some grades like 59 meters of 0.88, grounds per ton 100 meters of 0.82. Um, and, and interestingly enough, we even had high grade. One of the holes bottomed in, in 2 meters of 16.1 grounds per ton gold. Mm. So mm. Uh, high grade component there too. But I think what's... Um, put this in perspective, this gold find, uh, this is an intrusion-related identified uh, target, and uh, on our northern property is a deposit called the Red Mountain uh, Deposit, and I was involved with that when they initially drilled that, and it had a gold anomaly of around 100 PPD gold and about a 300 meter by 100 meter footprint. This target that we've got has over 500 PPP gold anomaly hmm. that stretches at least two kilometers and it's 500 meters wide. So for us hmm. to stick four holes in there and end up with these kind of values, it just it just shocked us and we realized we've got something that potentially could be very large. So yeah, what? we're we're uh, we're excited about the RC Gold property. Absolutely. So you're looking at a at a bulk mineable target, I guess. It, it really looks like it could be very, very large if there's continuity there, uh, but with some potential for high grade underneath, possibly. Exactly, exactly. Now these holes, uh, we put these four holes in. They went down about 300 meters on an average, um, and they were they were angled around 45 to 55 degrees. They also um, followed the topography from the top of the mountain down. So when you're at the bottom of one of these holes um, and you're 300 meters from surface, you're, from the drill collar, you're only around 100 meters from surface because of, oh. the mm-hmm. drops off in both directions. So this is an open pitable, potentially open pitable oh. environment. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's very significant. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Low stripping ratio. Um, yeah. Uh, so... All right, so what about the OGI then in the Yukon? 
So the OGI, we moved in there in September and uh, and drilled four drill holes into a, a, a zinc silver anomaly that has the uh, indications of potentially being a SEDEX type deposit. Um, it never had any drilling before. There's been a little bit of trenching done, but that was not very successful because of the permafrost. And so we went in there and drilled four holes over this anomaly that that also has some geophysics um, overlaying it. Uh, this anomaly is about 700 meters in length and about 200 meters wide um, with, a, with a silver of around one ounce per ton in the soils and about a half a percent zinc. So, so a very strong signature and uh, those assays are still pending. Results so what will uh, and so with regard to the Yukon, what will you be doing? I suppose you'll be in the pro- process of setting up your, your drill programs uh, and then you'll let the, let us all know what you're planning to do there, or, or do you know already? Well, we know that we're going to have a very aggressive drill program uh, on the saddle Egger zone over that two-kilometer area. It's mm-hmm. still open in length and depth. And uh, we want to we want to put enough drill holes in there to put a maiden resource out at the end of the year. So wow, we're talking, okay. you know, a minimum of ten thousand meters, and possibly twenty thousand meters just on that target, which is a tiny portion of our district scale property that is three hundred seventy six square kilometers. I mean, it's just there's so much potential on that on the RC Gold property. This is just one of many targets that we want to follow up with. But this is this is shaping up much faster than we anticipated with these results. Well, that sure sounds exciting. Um, then with respect to Burrow Creek, um, what do you have in store for there? That's your most advanced project yeah, at this Yeah, Burrow Creek, um, we completed 10 drill holes and, and completed those in April this year. And uh, that was successful in proving that the Burrow Creek vein, which hosts the, the historical deposit, continues to the south um, for what we believe is at least a, a kilometer and a half or a mile. And we, we stepped out and fenced our holes right to the end of the patented property. And, and then uh, uh, we're in the process of permitting for the, with the BLM to continue fencing out the other about a kilometer left to drill there. So that was very successful too, and some of the results we got were were uh, uh, definitely exactly what we would have expected. Being the Burrow Bain, we had like 41 meters of 1.15 grams per ton gold and 51.3 grams per ton silver. Um, and in there's a high grade component in this deposit too. Like we had one hole that ran 1.07 meters of 17.55 grams per ton. Gold and 33 grams per ton silver. So, so we're very pleased with what we've um, accomplished down there uh, at our Arizona property to date, and we're anxious to get going and and step out and and show that this deposit, this historical deposit of five million ounces of silver and 120 thousand ounces of gold, could be much larger, and mm-hmm. uh, and we want to be able to do that, and then and then do a resource calculation based on our, our new drilling. And you mean by next year, or would it be in 2023 when you do the resource? We're hoping to get our permits and be drilling down there this winter, and that would that would enable us to, to do a resource calculation uh, probably um, mid-summer by the time mm-hmm. we get our results back. So we're, that is our, our flagship property because it already has a foundation of, of a deposit there uh, in from the past. I mean, I was involved with that in 1988, and uh, we had all the permits we were going to put in production, and gold was at four hundred dollars an ounce, uh-huh. and slid off down to two fifty, and it and it yeah. got shelved. So mm-hmm. so it's it's um, it's definitely a lower risk than than any of our other projects. But um, now RC Gold is starting to kind of nudge up there too, where we're obviously we're onto something pretty big there. And then you still have another property, which is uh, more of a let's say a. A wild card, or let's say, uh, what, what, what do you call it? Um, your alpha project, which is a Carlin target, and you had a, a deep drill hole that you put down there this year. I believe it sort of wandered off in the wrong direction, perhaps. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, what, we went what, down. What are your, yeah, we went down seventeen hundred and some feet, or five hundred forty-five meters, I think, and uh, it was very successful in a lot of ways. It, it proved 
the structural interpretation that the lower plate carbonates were preserved there. It gave us anomalous gold with coincident mercury in several sections of the drill hole that are a scarlet signature. And so we believe that that's leakage from the lower plate carbonate that we were wanting to tap into. And um, that information has been very valuable in helping us uh, pinpoint where we're putting our second drill hole there. And, and you're planning to do that next year? Yes, we're planning on doing that in a few weeks uh, is, is, is oh, everything good. comes together. And so, uh, oh, oh, yeah, good. And hopefully it's a high-risk target, but being hit right in the Carlin uh, gold belt there, it's, uh, it's, it's just very compelling to, to move forward with that and, and, and test that uh, structural interpretation that we have to date. Give it a shot uh, with at least one drill hole, and then I suppose if, if it's successful, you might do more there, I suppose. Absolutely. We've got our permit for 10 drill holes mm -hmm. um, in place there, and uh, we're expanding on that as well based on the information that we've got to date. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fluid situation, and, and like, like most exploration uh, programs, you have to be willing to uh, pivot in, in short order when you're getting getting the right information and again that's that's why we're we're going to be focused pretty strongly on our Yukon RC project uh, come this spring mm -hmm. well there you, it looks like you could really come up with some good some good data there uh, based on four drill holes and hitting on each one of them and uh, as you've described it over a large target go uh, go Go big or go home is a process, is a philosophy of many people that I think more successful people. Looks like you have a chance to go big uh, there for sure. And who knows uh, in in Nevada? Uh, so you have a lot of things going on. How are you financed? Do you are you have enough money to do what you want to do next year, or at least to start the year? We have enough money to do what we want to do in Nevada and Arizona, but obviously a big aggressive program up in the Yukon is going to. Uh, take more money and um, we're looking at different options um, not just equity financing we're in discussions regarding convertible debt um, mm -hmm. uh, pre-royalty sales um, there's there, or maybe a combination of all three so so sure. yeah we're going to that's going to be a big program that uh, is going to have to be uh, looked at down the road uh, we're in the middle of putting our budget together right now on how many drill holes we want to put in that area to to end up with a, um, enough to, to do a maiden resource there. And we need enough money there uh, in that budget to follow up on two other gold discoveries. We made um, one with one of our other drill holes, aside from the Sile Agar area at the Big Creek anomaly. Um, i never had a drill hole in that mountain before, and, and we ended up with, uh, with some gold um, in, the, in the drill hole that needs to be followed up with. And then uh, another area, never had a drill hole, but the soils were strong and we trenched there and ended up with seven meters of 0.65 grams per ton gold, which again mm -hmm. is right in the ballpark what, what we're looking for for grade uh, based mm -hmm. on what uh, is being successfully mined at Victoria Gold uh, mm -hmm. in, that, in that belt right now. All right. We'll have to leave it go at that. Uh, it sounds like it's a, a story our listeners are going to want to keep in touch with uh, going forward. So thank you so much. Core for being with us, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you in the future again sometime soon. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, though, is uh, um, Sitka also has a uh, wholly owned subsidiary called Arctic Copper Corporation. Yes. And we've got our foot in the door with copper up in the Arctic there that uh, um, it's in our on our website and on our presentation, and it's it's pretty pretty compelling target. Uh, Wonderful. To move okay. Forward with it. With copper. Okay. okay. Well, thank we've got you, a, we've got a lot to watch. Uh, thank you so much, Cor. We we do have to run now, but thank you so much for giving us this update. Excellent. Thank you.